Hello students, I hope you had a wonderful week. Today, we will recall what we had done the previous week. Like we have done shapes, plain shapes and solid shapes. And how to use the shapes to form different objects. But before I proceed, let me ask you whether you have completed the activity given to you in our previous lesson. And the activity was to find how many shapes and the number, different shapes and the number was there in the figure given. Can anyone tell me how many shapes were there, different shapes? Oh yes, square. How many squares were there? 10. And rectangles? Eight. Can anyone tell me how many triangles were there in the figure? I can't hear. 32. Yes, yes, 32. So we have 32. And only one circle. So in this uh, shapes, we have the least number of shape is a circle and the triangle is the most, that is 32. Now if you want to find out the total number of shapes, what are we going to do is add. When we add, we get the total. Let's add. Here in the one space, we have a zero. The number eight, when we add to zero, we get eight. Eight plus two gives us 10, and 10 plus one gives us 11 ones. But we cannot write number 11 down. So we just write number one, and we carry it over to the tens place. We already have 1 in the tens place, so 1 tens plus 2, one, 1 more 10 gives you 2 tens. That makes 20. And we have 3 tens and that gives you 50. That is 5 tens and the total we get is 51. Did you all get 51 shapes? Wow, everybody's hand seems to be up. Very happy, very smart kids. Alright, so we have a total of 51 shapes. Today, teachers going to cover up concepts like patterns, tessellation and ten grams. What are patterns? We see patterns everywhere. Yes, on the grills, on dress materials. You can see patterns around teacher. You can see patterns on teacher's outfit. And on bed sheets and quilt at home, you must have very familiar with patterns. Patterns can be formed with objects, events and numbers. When the uh, objects, events and numbers are repeated uniformly, we get in a specific manner, we get what are called patterns. For example, if I draw a triangle like this and another one with a straight line, I can form a pattern. Patterns are of two types, growing patterns and repeated patterns. So let's find what is the difference between growing patterns growing patterns Let's take the topic growing pattern. When patterns grow, they repeat or they occur if in a regular form. For example, if I write 1, 2, 3 with numbers, I, I increase it. I write 1, 2, 3, 4. What have you seen here is the patterns with numbers 1, 2, 3. I start with 1, 2, 3, 4. I have increased it. So this is called a growing pattern. When the number or the pattern increases, 
It's the same pattern which is increasing. We call it a growing pattern. Let's find out what you understand by repeated patterns. So, repeated patterns repeated patterns for example I have a square and a triangle there is also a circle I have another square I have a triangle and I have a circle Here, the pattern is repeated. In the first part, we have a square, we have a triangle, we have a circle. And there's a repetition of the pattern. So when the pattern is repeated with straight lines and geometrical figures or geometrical shapes, we get a particular pattern called repeated pattern. I have drawn some patterns on a chart. The first pattern I have done with slanting lines. You must have seen here the pattern is more of a form of a V. Here is a half arrow. In the same way, the next pattern I have completed this. So I want you to help me complete the second pattern. The second pattern you have arrows. One arrow facing upwards, another one below and the third one at the side. You have noticed one up, down, side. Now the next figure is an arrow that points upwards. So what shall we do for the following shape? We shall draw an arrow that is facing below, downwards. The next one is at the side. Similarly, we have small rectangles and a square which has a slanting line like a letter, like an envelope. Now what we do is, here if you see, the shape is this way. In the next one, it is at the side. Here it's down. Again, we have to repeat. It's repeating. So, we need to draw and make the next shape which is at the side and another one which is at the bottom. What have you noticed? That the shapes, the outer shape, although it's same, the inner triangles that are there are placed in different places and there is a sequence which follows. So there is a pattern, you get a pattern. Here also there is a pattern. Now one, two, three and four are for you as an activity to be done at home. When you get time, have fun and complete by continuing the activity at home. Let's revise the patterns. Growing patterns and repeated patterns. Now for growing patterns, GP for growing patterns, for example if you're doing with numbers, let's take number 2. I have 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. That is a particular pattern followed here. Now, what pattern do you think is? It is when I add 2 to number 2, that is 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Similarly, I add another 2 here and I get 6. I add 2 and I get 8. When I add another 2 to 8, I get 10. So here is a pattern. Now the pattern is we have added 2 to each number and we have got even numbers displayed on the board. 
Similarly, if you do subtraction, say for example, I take number 10 and I minus 10 and subtracting 10 from 80. What do you think will come next? 10 minus 80 will give me 70. So if I minus another 10 from 70, I get 60. I minus another 10 from 60, I get 50. And minus another 10 from 50, I get 40. So like this, it keeps continuing. It occurs. It keeps, it's a um, continuous sequence but with a difference of 10. Here, it's a difference of, it's an addition of two numbers and so we get this pattern. Here is also a pattern, but the patterns are with numbers. So, I hope you have understood because the pattern here is growing. The pattern here is growing, so we call it as growing pattern. Events in nature also grow. There are so many events that take place. They grow because even seasons, we have a sequence. It comes in and goes. Now we talk about repeated patterns. Let's take an example with numbers. Let's take an example with numbers, repeated patterns with numbers. For example, I have three digits, one, one, one. Now I have two, two, two. In the next one, I have three, three, three. The sequence is a short sequence, but you have seen I have one, two, two and I have three. Similarly, I repeat one, one because I want to get a re repetition. I'm get, repeating the pattern. So when I repeat the pattern, I can write, I can do it here. I have to, what will come next? Will I have to write three or do I write two? I have to write two and then I write number three. So one, one, two, two, three times. Thrice I've written three again. I've written one, one again. Again, two, two and three. This is a repeated pattern. Let us do this repeated pattern using alphabets. Suppose I have A, B and C. I have the letter D repeated two times. So this is my pattern. I have A, I have B, I have C and I have repeated D. So my next letter will be, my letter, will, I will not write E but I will have to write A. So A, B, C and I have to repeat the letter D. So I have to have the same pattern repeated. Only then we say it is a repeated pattern because the pattern, a repeated pattern uses shapes, a straight line, a geometrical shape, but they are repeated. I hope you have followed what are patterns. Here teacher has used two shapes like the using the coconut shell, a bigger one, a bigger circle and a smaller circle. So using the two circles and two smaller circles for the eyes, I have formed the shape of a cat using paper for the ears and the tail. Here I made a nice pattern of a cat. I have different type of shapes on my table. I will take a square, a triangle, a rectangle, a circle and a star. I have a lovely pattern here. Let's make another pattern with pentagon, a rectangle, a star, take another star, 
using a cross shape here I repeat with the pentagon because this is a growing pattern and this is a repeated pattern so let me form a repeated pattern here I have two stars with one rectangle and a pentagon and two crosses so I am going to put a pentagon here with one rectangle using a star here my design is a repetition it is a repeated design while this is a growing design a pattern design or a pattern I have another one here are all triangles using these triangles we can make different patterns this three uh, triangles I can make a zigzag design I have four small triangles putting them together I can form one big triangle there are four triangles red yellow green and blue when I put the one side of the triangles I can get a bigger triangle here is just one small triangle when I put them put the four together I get a bigger one similarly I have two small ones and I can form a design using these triangles so you have a design where the bigger triangle alternates with the smaller triangle so I hope you have understood how to make patterns and design you can do different patterns growing patterns repeated patterns at home using things which are available and make different patterns and create more patterns and maybe in my next class you can show me the pattern our next concept for today is tessellation repeat after teacher tessellation is a new term but what is it you might have seen repeated designs everywhere on the ceiling on the floor or even on the walls each design is made up of different patterns and shapes the process of uh, covering when you cover the floor or the wall or the ceiling when you cover with 2d shapes or geometrical shapes with the, in such a way that no part no part is left uncovered or no gaps we get what is called tessellation so tessellation is also called as tiling tessellation can be made by using 3d shapes in a combination of one or more but you have to keep in mind that all the shapes have to be arranged without leaving a gap or not overlapping for example let's uh, read the rules for tessellation what are the rules that you have to keep in mind when you are doing a tessellation rules for tessellation to tessellate a surface there should be no caps or the design should not overlap the second rule the tile must be a regular polygon and of the same size now what are polygons polygons are like triangle rectangle squares we cannot make tessellate a surface whether it's a wall whether it's a ceiling or even the floor with a circle because when we tessellate with a circle we get a gap so we cannot tessellate a surface with a circle so each corner must look the same it meets at the point so it has to be the same the shapes must be arranged in such a way that you get a pattern 
without leaving gaps or overlapping. Here, teacher has an example. The teacher has done the shapes, has tessellated the chap in three different shapes. Here, teacher has used a square and alternated it with different shade of green and yellow and made a chessboard. I have an example of tessellation. It's the same depicted here on the chart. Now if you look at it, if you look at the design, you can find that all the points meet. Here, all the points meet, all the corners, they look the same. They are not overlapping. There are no gaps in between. If you look at this, similarly, in another diagram, on another pattern of this design, is also there are no gaps, no uh, overlapping. All the points are meeting at a point. Here we have used rectangles. Here we have used a diamond shape. With these polygons, these are all different types of polygons. Using this, we have got, we have actually, tessellation is also called as tiling. We can tile the wall, we can tile the roof, we can tile the floor. And we can use only these shapes to tessellate. A tessellation is also called tiling. Our final concept today is 10 grams. What is 10 grams? 10 grams is a Chinese puzzle. It is a square cut into seven pieces. Here, the ten is a square cut into seven pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In the seven pieces, the square is cut into five triangles, two big triangles, two medium size and one small. And there's a square and a rhombus. Here, teacher has used a a tetra pack and has made the 10 gram puzzle. These are the two big triangles, square, a rhombus, those one medium sized triangle and two small triangles. Now we can use these triangles but when we form a shape or a design or a pattern, we need to use all the seven shapes. That is a rule. So let's find out what are the rules that to be used for 10 grams. The first rule is all seven pieces must be used. All the pieces must be flat. All pieces must touch each other. The pieces should not overlap each other. Pieces can be rotated or flipped to make the desired shape. Using these seven pieces of 10 gram, each piece is known as 10. I will show you some formation. Let's begin. Let's form an image of a sitting man using 10 grams. So I will take the shape of a square for his head. Using the bigger triangle, I will make his upper body. Now, I need to make the middle portion of his body. So, I will take the other big triangle. Using the medium sized triangle, I am going to make the sitting position, his legs. So, the last triangle I will utilize for his feet. And here I have made a man, an image of a man in the sitting position. I have not left any gaps in between. They are not overlapping. And I think he is a perfect man in a sitting position. The object shall I teach you now? What shape shall I do? I think I shall do the boat. So let's, I, 
you can help teacher to make the boat. In the bigger triangle, the two big triangles for the middle portion of the boat, this will cover the top part. I'll use the square for the side with a smaller triangle. If I put it this way, oh yes, I get the boat, one side of the boat. Now how do I put this? Can I fix it like this? No. Shall I do it this way? Yes, it looks somewhat like a boat, isn't it? Oh yes. Putting it in this form, we get the shape of a boat. See? There are no gaps, not overlapping and I have formed a boat. Now I am going to form an animal, a shape of an animal and you are going to guess what, is the, what it looks like or which animal it is. So I will take the big triangle I am going to use the medium triangle I shall not tell you what I am using it for. So, the other part of the body is an animal. You have to guess. I'm using a square and these two triangles. Can you guess what this is? It is one animal. Many people have it as a pet in the house. Can I get the answer? Oh yes, it's the cat. Well done. I hope you had fun using different shapes and forming different animals and objects. Teacher enjoyed doing it with you. And I want you to do at home using any materials. You can make different objects and different items using any paper. And thank you for being good audience and helping teacher to guess what she had done.